Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be looking at Netcat and how to use it to perform a variety of uh, certain functions or tasks really. So, for those of you who don't know what Netcat is, Netcat is essentially almost like or the Swiss army knife of networking tools and, it's, and it allows us to perform a lot of things like reverse shells, uh, you know, port listening and that really comes into uh, play when you talk in the ethical hacking field. But uh, regard, uh, you know, regardless of, of uh, the features that it does allow you to use, it's a fantastic networking tool that can allow you to communicate between, uh, you know, two or more computers and allows you to perform a plethora of functions. Now, what I'm going to be doing to illustrate this is I'm going to be running, uh, you know, Windows and Linux and I'm going to be transferring information or co communicating between those two operating systems. So I already have Netcat downloaded on Windows, as you can see here, the link will be in the description for this download. So make sure you extract it and the uh, Netcat executable is on your desktop, all right? Um, now, once that's done, uh, again, uh, if you're using Linux, which uh, probably you are, because this is where it really is uh, quite awesome. Let me just unpin that. Uh, so essentially, uh, on Linux, Netcat comes pre-installed, but if it doesn't come pre-installed, uh, you can just install it using the app, uh, you, know, you know, you can just download it and it'll uh, be installed for you. I'm running this on Ubuntu. Um, so essentially, it's really, really very simple on how to run it. Now, before we actually get started with uh, communicating between the two, um, we will be using Netcat to obviously communicate between these two. So we, we are going to do it locally. Not I'm not going to be using... Uh, the IP addresses, the actual IP addresses to communicate, but that is an option. And from there, you can get an idea of uh, the power of this tool. It's quite different from Secure Shell because, again, initiating, uh, you know, a reverse shell with Netcat is much easier. And again, SSH is really not that awesome or it really is, isn't, uh, I would say, designed to be used on Windows. Now, um, uh, of course, we we're going to be trying to communicate, but before we get started uh, uh, with communicating between the two, to start up Netcat, we can use the NC, all right? Now, NC is the, on Linux, is uh, a bit of an older version. The new one is NCAT, all right? Now, if I hit NCAT, as you can see, it's going to tell me it's not installed. So, uh, it's going to give us a bit of an error there, but don't worry about that. Now, if I hit N NC, which is N uh, Netcat, and I use the help, it's going to give us uh, the, uh, let me just do that again. I think it's believe it's help. All right, there we are. So it's going to give us the information about how to use uh, Netcat. And this is very, very uh, useful information. One of the most important uh, commands um, we're going to be using is the verbose option right here that allows us to verbose output. Again, I know what the V stands for. Uh, again, we can be li listening. We'll be using the L port quite a lot to listen for inbound connections. Uh, and the we're going to be also using the P for uh, the specifying a specific port uh, right here. So essentially, you can just use the help command right here, and that'll give you a uh, good information about Netcat and how to use it. But I'll be explaining this as we go. So the first thing we want to do now is, uh, or I want to do, is I want to just open my command prompt because this is how you have to initiate Netcat. And I'm just going to browse to where I have the Netcat executable stored, which is on my desktop. All right. So once I'm on my desktop, all I have to do is just hit NC and I'm going to be using the options or the commands now. So I'm going to say V for verbose, uh, L to listen and uh, um, the port, uh, of course, we're, those are these, just the options that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to listen on a random port, like, uh, you know, like something like 1200. Uh, I know that's uh, that's just weird using a random port, but we can just go ahead and use it or we can use the 1337 ports. Uh, but essentially, if I do this, uh, it's going to listen on port 1200. Now, what I can do now is I can get the IP address for uh, this Windows machine, uh, the local IP address. So that can be done by going to IP config and looking up your adapter. Now, I already have the IP. I already know what it is. So we can go back into Linux. And uh, essentially, what I can do now is just hit NC, um, NC 
and then obviously now since we're connecting with you can just verbose the output all right so it basically displaying the connection and whatever we're doing and the ip which is 192.168.0.111 and the port is 1200 all right that's how we specify it so if i hit enter it's going to say connection to 192.168.0.111 on port 1200 is uh, succeeded so it's using tcp it can also use udp but uh, let's look at what's going on here now the first thing you can realize is because we have not initiated a reverse shell we can actually just communicate directly to these machines and uh, let me show you so let's say if i type something here like i can type a message saying hello this is a test um this is a test message all right something like that and if i hit enter and uh, you c it's not going to display anything here because uh we have we have an essentially connected to the windows machine but if we go back to the windows machine you can see it's going to say uh, hello this is a test message so that's pretty pretty awesome and you can see the message and you can essentially just communicate back and forth so you can say this is the this is a message or i can just say hello it's me all right and if we go back into the linux machine you can see it's going to say hello it's me uh, now the most important thing now obviously is to re initiate a reverse shell so let's actually go ahead and do that so i'm just going to clear this out i'm going to uh, disconnect uh, so i'm going to stop and uh, uh, the first we're going to be trying to um, essentially get a reverse shell to the windows machine um, so what we can do now is uh, we can uh, on the windows machine is we can just say nc uh, so again vlp listen to this port or on this port sorry and we specify our port here and now uh, before we get started i just want to say we you can also use the help command right here all right so as simple as that and one more thing we're going to be using is we're going to be using the e command which al allows us to invoke a program all right so it allow as you as you can see the uh the what is written here the documentation here is it's saying in inbound program to execute so this will allow us to in both cases either you uh, you know execute a program on both sides so in this case we're going to be trying to invoke a reverse shell in this case we're going to be trying to invoke cmd uh, when we reverse it or when we switch it um, to linux we're going to be trying to invoke the shell but for now uh, we're just going to be invoking cmd so nc uh, vlp uh, something as simple as that and our port you can specify any open port again that choice is yours and we're going to be using the e option to invoke a program in this case cmd.exe so you can actually see how robust this is so once we hit enter oops i made a mistake there sorry about that i always seem to make really annoying mistakes all right there we are so it's listening on that port now if we go back to uh, linux back here and now essentially uh, we are wait uh, the windows machine is listening for a connection and now all we have to do is connect and we'll be able to use the command prompt because we have initiated a reverse shell uh, so what we do is nc uh, vv uh, to verbose and the ip 168.0.111 and 1.1200 for the port like so whoops excuse me uh, let me just get that and there we are as you can see it's going to say connection succeeded and it's going to invoke the cmd and as you can see um uh, i have access to the command prompt on that machine so from here you can really really understand uh, the power of this and again we can just run uh, a plethora of stuff we can find we can see the directories on my desktop as you can see we have a bunch of folders there uh, you can uh, again you can create a folder so test let's create a test folder test and uh, if we go back there as you can see we it did create a test folder so really this is awesome and it's much much faster than using secure shell but again as i said secure shell is more is much more of a popular tool when communicating between linux and uh, you know your linux servers etc etc you know uh, for example the clients that you have on windows to connect to ssh or or using ssh are like programs like putty but that's besides the point now again where we we're basically invoked a reverse shell on the windows machine so we can run a lot of stuff 
but now let's try and do it in the opposite way. So I'm going to clear this. And uh, again, uh, on the Windows machine, it should have told us that. Uh, let me just get rid of this. Um, like so. And got rid of that folder. Let me clear this out. Now we essentially have to invoke a reverse shell on Linux. So on Linux, essentially, we're just reversing the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, NC and uh, through NC, we're going to say E. All right. Now we're invoking. All right. So what we do is we say NC and E and we're going to say bin. All right. So bin. Uh, SSH, I believe, uh, or actually, am, am I using the correct syntax here? NC, uh, let me try the first way, which I remember quite, uh, you know, quite honestly, which is VLP, because we are listening now on a port, obviously. Uh, 1337, if we just reverse the process, or we can use the 1200 port, and uh, we use the E to invoke. Uh, now we're using the shell, so bin... Uh, sh right if I hit enter uh, invalid option e hmm that's weird uh ncat what if I use the newer version of ncat would that help uh, now that would essentially mean I change the syntax slightly and I use the bin sh and I specify the port again so 1200 and uh, ncat is not installed uh, oh yeah I have to actually install the nmap so this is another thing I wanted to ensure, to show you guys uh, is essentially um, let me just get that password entered uh, with uh, Linux uh, initiating a reverse shell or allowing Windows to connect to Linux uh, in this, you know in really a simple in a simplified form of understanding what that means is that uh, we'll have to use the latest version of netcat on linux because again that gives us a whole new set of features like uh you know using ssh etc etc so what i have to do is just install uh, nmap because i haven't installed that yet on this virtual machine and that could take a while uh, depending on the download size my internet connection again is not the best in the world but it should actually just get this uh, done really really quickly now again, uh, of course, uh, the differences between the newer and the older version of Nmap uh, or N uh, or Ncat are essentially uh, Netcat are essentially the fact that one of them is more optimized to be uh, to use reverse shells on both sides. Now, what I mean by this is, let me just clear this up and let me just show you that it does work now. Uh, so what I can do is just say ncat e because we're invoking the shell and sh like so um, vlp and 1 1200 right there we are so as you can see it's going to say listening and uh, now what we can do is uh, oops I forgot I forgot to get the IP address here so let me just get that right now the uh, local IP address so I have config like so uh, we're using my ethernet uh, which is the virtual machine and uh, if i just get it right now uh, there we are uh, we're using the i do 168.2.128 all right let me just try and uh, connect back now and now through netcat on uh, windows we essentially just saying verbose and 168.2.128 28 I believe was the IP address and the port is 1200 uh, and hopefully it allows us to connect and let's see if we got uh, we established connection uh, there we are we did get a connection and uh, let me just see whether we can do it uh, there we are Ubuntu we have got connection so let's try and run something like who am I uh, and as you can see who am you uh, root so you name some simple, um, uh, some simple bash commands, and again we can list all the files on the desktop. So CD desktop again we can now navigate, and we have this, uh, we have correctly initiated a reverse shell. LS um, nothing on the desktop, so LS. Uh, whoops. 
and SAL, nothing else. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, there's a lot to cover with Netcat and I'll be making other videos regarding this, but I just wanted to give you guys an overview of how to use Netcat because again, it is really, really useful and you will find yourself using it quite a lot when trying to initiate connections with uh, multiple computers, uh, whether on the same network or, uh, you know, using the uh, real IP addresses and connecting to them remotely. Again, many people will complain or say that SSH is much better and that's true it is, but SSH is really a much more of an exclusive tool while Netcat is uh, more robust in terms of the functions it can perform and the reverse shell connections that you can uh, perform and is much more suited. Uh, I would say for an ethical hacker, I would uh, really, really encourage you to learn how to use Netcat because again, it allows you to listen on ports. Uh, and again, if uh, if I was monitoring traffic, uh, if I just initiated a connection between and I was listening on a specific port, like let's say on the TCP ports, I could actually open up Wireshark and monitor the packets that are being, uh, that are incoming and outgoing, uh, either TCP or whatever the type of port we're listening through. Again, as I said, it's a very, very advanced tool that can perform a lot more functions that I've just, than, uh, that I've showed more than I've shown you today. Uh, but we'll be getting to them as we move along. Now, uh, we'll be moving from uh, Python or into the C++ uh, uh, series where we'll be actually creating an advanced key logger, which will be really, really awesome. So I hope you guys are excited and we'll be moving a bit into more of an advanced section of hacking now. Anyway, guys, that's basically it for this video. If you like this video, found value in it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. Or if you have any personal questions, you can hit me up on my social networks or you can hit me up on Kick. Uh, you can check out my website for the latest hacking news and resources. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you had a fantastic day and still have a fantastic day. Peace. Peace.